Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you a painting review video. So I very recently received a rather large care package from Army Painter. Thank you very much Army Painter for sending that out to me, that was very kind. And one of the things they sent me out was the mega paint set for their new speed paint range. Um, very exciting, there's been lots of videos out about these uh, particular product already. Um, but I figured since how my channel mostly focuses around getting miniatures painted really fast, doing a nice tabletop standard, working with contrast, I thought I might be quite a good person to uh, review these paints and try and debunk any myths that have been going on about them and find out how good and useful they are and how me and my community um, can use these guys to, uh, to get some really nice results. So I was surprised by the results of this video and um, I hope you enjoy uh, what I have discovered on the journey. So stick around and enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I did was of course, have a good old gawk at all the different colors that were available in the speed painting mega set range. I then had to choose some models that I wanted to use for the test and I went for the Necromunda Hive Scum kit. The main reason for this is there's lots of fur, lots of cloth, lots of skin, lots of armor. So lots of different textures and stuff that I think would be really good um, place to, uh, to test these paints out on. So I was eager to get into the box and see what I was working with. Straight off the bat, there's just so many colors. Um, it was like that whole like kind of kid in a candy store, Christmas morning feel, just tearing open new paints and uh, having a really good go of them. I um, also got a, there was a brush free with a kit and I noticed it didn't have that weird triangle handle that I'm not a big fan of. So I was actually quite excited by that. And um, I will definitely give that a try uh, later on. So uh, I just want to apologize for the first few frames of footage um, or the first few scenes of footage in the video. I tried to put my white palette behind it just to show you guys the uh, the paints on the palette, but the autofocus on my camera didn't like this very much and it made everything really, really dark. So I do apologize that the first kind of two, three minutes of this video, um, it's going to be a lot darker than it should be. I realized afterwards I've removed the white palette and the camera kind of autofocuses back to its natural colors. Um, so if you just bear with me two or three minutes, I promise you that the quality will get a little bit better after that. So I started off with the Crusader skin, um, just to kind of, kind of get my bearing and start applying paint to miniature. And um, people out there have been saying that the speed paints are slightly thinner than contrast paints. And I definitely did feel that when I started applying the Crusader skin. I noticed that the very, uh, the most raised predominant parts of the face were still almost white. Um, which to me was a, a kind of like a red flag for a minute there. I was like, oh no, these paints are really thin. I just didn't kind of poor coverage on these. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy them. Um, when the Crusader skin dried, it looked fantastic. Um, the very bright edge highlights on the edge of the skin kind of worked a treat. It almost looked looked better. Like, um, I then moved over to this really beautiful brown color, the hardened leather. This was by far one of my favorite speed paint and contrast colors. I should not. I should not call them speed paint contrast colors. I apologize. The speed paint colors. Um, it's just a force of habit from working with contrast so much. Um, I love this brown. If I had known nothing else about the range of paints um, and someone had handed me a pot of this brown and asked me to review it, I would be giving the speed paints raving reviews. Um, it's just so beautiful. Uh, then onto a bit of grim black, uh, which is just their standard black uh, speed paint color. I use this on his uh, pants, his undershirt and stuff like that. Nothing fancy. I'm just trying to block in all the different colors now. So when I approached uh, this project, um, I wanted to do what it says on the box. And on the box it says, one coat and done. So with the speed paints, they expect you to apply one coat of their paints onto each part of the miniature and then be done. That's what the miniature should look like at the end. Will it give me a nice tabletop standard, something that I am pleased with? I guess we'll have to keep watching and finding out. Um, so the first half of that video is that I'm going to prepare four miniatures using as many of the different colors as I can get my hands on um, or find spots to apply. And then after that, I'm then going to move over. I'm going to pick two of the models that I like the most and I'm going to try and then take them to the next step. So here's the camera actually properly focusing on um, the miniature. I apologize for the white again. I use runic gray for any metallic parts across all four miniatures because obviously there's no silver in the speed paint range. Uh, Brita Grey was a really good kind of substitute for that. It wasn't just a flat grey, it wasn't just a blue, it would kind of sit somewhere in between and it did actually work, I personally feel, really well as a substitute for silver. Better slaughter red for the casing of the 
chainsword. What good 40k chainsword is uh, cut dead, leaving the hive without being a fresh coat of red lacquer paint? The red was also stellar. I mean, as you can see, the coat that it got in one kind of pass, uh, bright and vibrant. I was a big fan of that. Like I said, the Necromunda hive models were a great uh, place to use loads of different colors. So, and that's what I did. I just kept grabbing the next hive ganger, um, picking out a couple of different of the speed paints and then applying them. So then moving over to that golden yellow color for uh, the kind of skirt part of this miniature. Uh, kind of goes up around the sides of that shirt and around the back of the collar. And layering up that piece later on was actually one of my favorite painting experiences of the entire thing. Now, obviously Army Painter sent me out these uh, these paints along with a mega paint set of the air paints and a mega paint set of their uh, war range. So I will be using those paints primarily, no, entirely to uh, do this entire project. So even when I layer the project later on or wash a miniature later on, I'm gonna stick to the Army Painter range and series and I basically use the paints as they're intended to be used and see what kind of results that we're going to get. And as you can see, I am just churning through different colors, trying to uh, test them all out using the grays, using the blacks, all the browns, the different skin tones. And I'm, I'm genuinely having a lot of fun with them. People, things like this, uh, the purple alchemy, this made me kind of uh, reminiscent of like a 90s Batman villain, you know, the, the kind of dark undertone, but then all these vibrant extra colors going off all over just to make them stand out from the Gotham's dark and grim city streets. Um, so I got to put a bunch of pinks and stuff on the models, uh, which I really enjoyed doing. Uh, I was only going to do it on the kind of hockey pad material of his armor, but then I decided to, maybe he's very proud of his pink and purple color scheme, so he would have dyed his hair this beautiful pink and purple, so I did the same thing. Um, I gave him a big pink mohawk. Even things might like malignant green. In my head, this is a color that was supposed to be used on like Nurgle rotten miniatures. Um, textures and stuff like that. Um, I didn't have anything like that in this uh, the box of four miniatures, so I just tried to throw it over um, this miniature's jacket, and I love the result of that as well. It sit really nicely into all the recesses. It wasn't too strong on any of the raised parts. It was a really interesting tone, um, and yeah, I was delighted with it. Once again, I tried to give this one a, a mad color scheme for the hair, so I went for a pla plasmatic bolt color scheme which obviously is supposed to be used for energy weapons and stuff like that, but I went for the hair. Fire Drain Orange, um, was I, I thought was going to be a different kind of tone of orange, but it turned out to be this really warm kind of rustic orange. Um, and I basically imagined this guy to be like an escaped convict or something like that. So I wanted to give him an orange jumpsuit. And once again, it worked out fantastically. So this is kind of the end of me just trying out all of the different random colors. These are the four miniatures that came out from me doing that test. These are all single flat coats of Army Painter Speed Paint. And I think the results are fantastic. If somebody showed up to me to play a game, set the army up across the table for me, and they were to this standard, I would be delighted. And vice versa, if I walked up to a table and I deployed an army that was to this standard, I would be delighted. Each of these miniatures only took a couple of minutes to paint. It took a lot of stress out of painting. It's gonna help a lot of people get through their backlogs. Even if you say to yourself, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll work these miniatures up later on more, that's fine, get them to the standard first. They're not sitting on a shelf as gray. They're pretty much painted as it is. Then of course you can take them to the next step. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've chosen these two miniatures, my favorite two that I've worked up so far, and I'm going to take these guys to the next step. I'm gonna use two different methods. The one on the left, I'm going to completely cover with shade, which is what I normally do when painting miniatures. I give them an all over coat of shade, and then I'm going to layer that up when it's dry. The one on the right, I am not gonna wash. I'm just gonna go straight onto the layering phase. A lot of people are talking about the fact that these paints kind of reactivate with moisture and um, which leads to all the paints bleeding together and like horror stories but i think these horror stories are mostly unfounded not backed up obviously if you're going to do hundreds of layers of thin glazing or dozens of layers of thin glazing on these middle miniatures or with these paints you're going to come across problems but for army batch painting i'm not seeing any problems whatsoever i mean i'm applying the army painter soft tone shade across this entire miniature there's no varnish step in between, and none of the paints are reactivating. No bleeding is happening, no nothing. I'm not seeing any issues whatsoever. So I'm not sure what I'm doing differently or what I'm doing 
wrong question mark right question mark um but i'm enjoying the process so this isn't a video that's going to i'm going to show you how to paint hive scum so i'm not going to go into each paint and how i applied it and stuff like that i'm just going to show you broadly the six paints that i used which are these ones here from the war paint range and i'm going to use these to uh, layer up um the hive scum so simple gray highlights this is obviously going to be a little bit harsher on the uh, paint underneath so if anything was to reactivate it would be on this kind of stage and once again i didn't find it i found that the the army painter war paints layered over the speed paints really well um the the kind of slight transparency of the uh, war paints meant that the the kind of tones between colors was really good and uh, like this is the stage i was telling you about earlier where i was layering up this yellow and i was like damn i'm getting really nice texture out of this kind of bit of war paint show or the bit of speed paint showing underneath and then just working that color up i had a great time <laughs> layering up the skin now i use two different tones of skin um, for a layering up each miniature uh, this one i used i had a little bit less fun with i couldn't get the kind of coat that i wanted to this may be the only time where i, I could have seen some reactivation i don't know whether i did you know, i was just being slightly paranoid and um, but I wasn't having as much fun with it. And I started to wonder if the, maybe the skin tones aren't as fantastic in the Army Painter range. But then I used the other tone for the other miniature and I just had a completely different experience. It was great. So perhaps one of them is supposed to be the base and one of them is supposed to be the layer. And this one's just a little bit thinner. And um, I can't be too sure. But uh, it was still a lot of fun to do. I then, even that, uh, the color that I used for silver once I was layering back over it with a silver, it, it, that natural blue tone just acted like the shadow and shade. It didn't detract from the paint scheme at all. It says the little sawn off shotgun doesn't look terrible. But adding the nice silver tones that of course are going to make it pop even more. And then of course getting to that electric pink. I really wanted to make this pop on this miniature so I spent a little bit of extra time um, mixing two colors together to get the right kind of pink tone that I wanted to use. And then I took my time and layered up all of the different parts of his armor, including those big ribs going over his shoulder pad and even like frosted tips in his hair. He got this electric pink. Um, and in the end, I think this was probably my favorite of the two miniatures. I thought the other one was going to be because I love a good chainsword. I'm not really a fan of the flail thing. I'm not really a fan of flails in general. But once I did this funky pink scheme, I was like, oh, maybe I could do a whole Necromunda gang like this or hmm, maybe. And this is where I got to with that miniature after applying a couple of coats of layering. Look how the skirt turned out as a layer. I call that high tabletop standard now. I would be delighted to have an army like this. I'd be proud to have an army like this on the table. Absolutely no shades were used, just the army speed paints and a couple of war paints. Now this guy's shades have dried, his uh, light tone. Um, and like I said, once I went back to it and perfectly checked that it was dry, absolutely, as you can see, there's no bleeding between colors. There's no, like you would definitely see that red chain sword cover bleeding into the nice shiny teeth or anything like that, but there's, there's none of it. So just like before I went in and then layered over the, uh, the speed paints we'd done already. Now, if you are worried about the reactivation, think about it like this. If you apply a shade like I just did carefully and it dries and no bleeding has happened, this will count as like a coat of varnish because the shade is not going to reactivate. Therefore, the, the model underneath is even more protected. It's what I find with contrast and why when I'm painting with contrast, I do basically treat contrast as all of my base coats and then I put a shade over the top of the entire miniature. This then act as that protective layer. Contrast is, does not create an entire, a, a very strong coat of paint on a miniature and just simply rubbing your thumb over raised parts of contrast will literally wipe it off. Um, and that the shade acts almost like a layer of protective varnish. So I think the same principle is through here um, for the army speed paints. This is the skin tone that I had um, much better look with. I really like the flow of it. I really like the coverage it got. And then in the end, I really enjoyed uh, highlighting up this guy's face. This guy has a, an immense like head of hair. It's like an 80s action hero villain kind of haircut, really spiky and all like huge, almost something like Dragon Ball Z. 
But then he's got this like really big bald patch on the back of his head, almost like a monk's haircut. I didn't quite understand it, um, but I found it really funny and lots of fun to uh, to paint and layer up. I then added the silver over uh, all those armor panels and the weapon, the teeth of the chainsword. Being careful. And when I started to get to this stage and saw that the miniatures, the two of them together, nearly completed, and I was delighted. A few uh, yellow um, frosted tips just to bring that crazy Goku hair. Um, a little bit more predominant, something you would see in the under hives of Necromunda are out on the ash wastes. And last, but by no means least, we're going to add a bright and vibrant red to uh, pull up that chainsword. Like I said before, chainsaws to me are a very iconic thing in Warmer 40k. Most of the ones that I paint have these red casings. And I did love how this layered up over the speed paint and gave us a uh, a really pleasing result. I have to say, like I said, I'm a huge advocate for contrast paints. My entire YouTube channel is built around painting with contrast paints and then layering them up. So anything that's gonna add to that is just a fantastic product. I just consider these to be more uh, contrast colors in my arsenal. They're gonna complement them perfectly. And as you can see, these are the results of the two miniatures that I painted up. And I don't know about you guys, maybe tell me in the comments below, I'm super proud of these two miniatures. I think they look fantastic. If Army Painter ever got a reputation of being a lower grade paint than any of the other ones on the market, I would argue that point now. I can now back it up with experience um, and a bit of know-how. So once again, thank you very much Army Painter for uh, sending these products to me, letting me review them and letting me show them to my community. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about uh, Army Speed Paints and army paints in general in this video. Okay guys, that's my two cents on army speed paints. I will absolutely be using these for my own personal hobby moving forward. They definitely have a uh, position in my paint collection and I can see myself using them for years to come. Thank you guys so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Um, if you enjoyed what you saw, make sure you give the video a like. If you have any questions about anything that I did or any further questions on Army Speed Paints that you think that I may be able to answer, make sure you write them in the comments below. I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If you saw some real value in the content that I put out and want to see the rest of the painting series, um, then make sure you uh, click the links below to go to my Patreon and I become a member of my community. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you in the next video.